can't I can't be like a creative medicine or something if Woo! I don't like come the energy that it takes to learn something new, you channel that energy. Over the years um like um put up this Instagram page and I've tried my best to create um in every shape or form that I can. And one thing I've realized is and um, beyond what I put out, beyond what I get from what I'm putting out, I realize that it changes me as a person. I'm just here for the journey. I'm here for what I can learn. I'm here for yeah. the person who makes me back. You've got to find your niche. Tell us your education story. You started way back. Um, when I was really young, maybe six, maybe seven, eight, I'm not sure. But then I, my uncle had an induction. You know, after um, med school, you have an induction and then you're officially a doctor. So I went forward when they were saying the Hippocratic Oath and then I said it and I just knew. It was like, he called, <laughs> it called onto me and I answered. And yeah, that's what... <laughs> Yeah, so I was inducted before I went through education. So I'm just fulfilling all righteousness. Amen. I love it. Yeah. I actually love it. So wait, are you Christian then? Yes. Okay, because fulfilling all righteousness is very, very Christian phrase. Okay, fantastic. Uh, so you you saw your uncle do it and you were like, this is all this is what I'm about. Yeah. However, um there was a point where when I eventually got into med school. I would call it med school. Um, I got into a course called pre-medicine. Um, it's, it was in Europe, so it wasn't like um, the US pre-medicine where you do four years of a degree and then you have mm. um, four years for medicine. It was more like two years in pre-med and then four years in medical school. So I started that program and after a while I realized just how much work medicine was right. and I was like am I sure I really wanted to be a doctor and on the okay. side uh, I got into video production um, sure that's a story on, it, on its own but then I started thinking that I could be a director I, I mean I was looking at um, I was looking at Scorsese and Christopher Nolan a couple of directors I was looking up to and I wanted to go into film like big time and then I'll, so I told film, me, film, film direction, mm -hmm. like film director, rather. Yes, uh, okay. yes, like Hollywood film director. But then okay. I think that was also a phase because after a while it died down. I think I was just running away from facing school. The fact that I'm, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just didn't want to go to school. Okay, I actually right. applied to uh, a film school that was close to my school and um, without my parents okay. knowledge and um i was processing the application and then i spoke with them i was really determined but then we had a conversation and after that i realized that uh, maybe i might just want to push through with med school because the only reason i wanted to stop was not because i didn't want to be a doctor anymore just because it was hard and that's what i realized mm. and i realized that film school was also going to be hard possibly harder because it's Hollywood is mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. It would present so, its own challenges. Okay, yeah. I then, have so many questions, but keep going, keep going. Okay, so and then I decided to stick with. But then there was some complication with my um, the pathway I was taking that time. Um, mm. It seemed like uh, the school I was at at that time. Did not have the required um, accreditations for me to practice freely after I finished, and then we realized that later. So um, I decided to make a transfer, um, and I start. I, I had to start school again because due to this whole accreditation thing, the mm. school I was going to didn't even accept my um, my previous um, study studies. transcript or year credits. Yeah. So I had to start from year one. And then a couple of times I'll feel challenged and I'm like, no, I am I have other stuff I'm doing and I can just make these my career path and just focus on business or focus on um maybe become an influencer. 
just make Isaac mm-hmm. the Creator a big thing and then do that mm-hmm. for a living. So mm-hmm. it has been rough, but I'm mm-hmm. still here wanting to be a doctor. So I believe mm-hmm. this that voice that called onto me the first time is, is still ringing. It's still yeah. it's still ringing. Amazing. Okay, let's start to tease this out a little bit. So one of the first things I want to ask is, you used the word eventually got into medical school. Can you tell me a little bit about the challenges of getting into medical school in Nigeria? Why did you decide to go abroad, as you said? And why didn't you know about the accreditation situation prior to starting? And I've got my own personal challenge with getting into medical school, but it'll be interesting to see how it sounds from another perspective in another place altogether, you know? Getting into med school in Nigeria it's is quite difficult because um every not everyone but a lot of people want to be doctors. And sure, sure. Um there's a limited um there's limited space for um what's the word? There's limited space for acceptance. There there are low acceptance rates in Nigerian universities generally mm-hmm. um, because mm-hmm. there are so many people that want to be doctors. So mm-hmm. you have to have there's this exam we write called JAM that's joint sure. exam matriculation mm-hmm. board. And um I think I scored two seven three at the time at the time. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. usually those that would get into med school would score mm-hmm. about three hundred and something over four hundred. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I had two seven three which was um, not good enough to get into a federal university. So I applied to mm-hmm. a private university and, um, I was told, I was, I wasn't given admission actually. And I was waiting for admission. Other mm-hmm. people I knew that applied to that school got admission, but I wasn't given admission. So my brother was going abroad to Cyprus. And then since I was waiting, I just decided with my parents to apply to the school he was already processing to go to. And then mm. we got into it. On their website, they had this two plus four program. That is the two years of pre-med. And then we do four years somewhere else um, in a school, particular school in Antigua, that is in Southern America. So um, when I got into the school, I decided to ask, um, people in the admin, I decided to ask um, key people in the school about this whole program and it seemed nobody knew anything about it. So mm. what I suspect is that that partnership thing was set up years ago and then it was just left on their website. So it wasn't valid anymore because no one in the school knew about it. It would have been possible for me to finish with this program and try to get into that um, the, the remaining of the program the rest of the program, but that was too risky because if no one in the school knew about it, then how yeah. would I even go about it? So yeah, that's 100%. why I decided to transfer. No, um, you made a good choice. You made a good choice. I found myself in a similar boat because I think the whole difficulty getting into medical school is, you know, more of a too many people want to do it than there are spots. And I think that's actually worldwide. And also I experienced, you know, similar challenges here in Ireland not getting enough points, finding it difficult to get in. I then applied to a school in Poland because I saw it in the newspaper and I got acceptance almost immediately, which in itself is a red flag because we all know medical school is hard to get into. Getting in that easy is, is problematic. So I started to do the homework, you know, after getting the admission letter and it was looking like stuff exactly like you're saying, accreditation was looking, not even accreditation, but the fact that what threw me off was there was stuff like when you come back to Ireland, um, you had to sit all these exams and, you know, there seemed to be a lot of roadblocks to be able to practice medicine, you know, here. So I was like, I don't know if I want to do all that hard work, move across the world, well, not across the world, but to me, if I across the world, and to then come back and not be necessarily in a position to practice. So I was like, let me just try the Irish system one more time. And thank God that I, that I got in. So I hear you and your struggles are, um, in terms of entrance, is definitely not unique to Nigeria. But at the moment, you're still in medical school? Yes. I know. Tell well, us. Tell us. Um, <laughs> okay, so, I was going, um, I, was, I was schooling in Near East, mm. Near East University in Cyprus, um, the regular six-year program, medical school. Yeah. Um, I finished the one year, 
and um, <coughs> it's kind of hard for me to say. So the, the tuition was kind of a challenge for my parents, sure, uh, because uh, with the whole Naira the situation, they are earning from Nigeria and um, the economy started having challenges so it seemed like it was really difficult for them to cover um, the tuition and yeah. everything yeah, yeah. so we started looking to other options and um, i decided to fly back home for a visa interview mm -hmm. to the us not that the us is less expensive but um we found a particular program where um we would be able to do the first degree in nursing okay. and then go on to med, med school. You know how it is in the um, yeah, US where you do a first before, degree and yeah, then okay. four years. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so I wanted to do a first degree in nursing um, so that if by the time I want to get into med school, there are still like financial challenges, I still have like a degree yeah. to work a few years and mm -hmm. then get back into med school. So that was kind of the plan. Uh, but the visa interview did not work out in the sense that I didn't get the visa physically. Mm -hmm. So right now I have not like officially withdrawn from my former school, but we're still looking at other options. So yes, I'm still in med school. Okay, amazing. Well, you sh and is this the school where you're? Are you in the school where you're worried about the accreditation, or this is a different school? <laughs> This is a different school. This is a different school. Okay, well, see how things go. I definitely recommend looking at European entrants, such as the UK, such as Ireland, because there is options on our end to not do that four years and then four years again. We have direct entry, so you could do like a six-year or a five-year program, and that'd be that, you know, instead of doing four and four. So those, those are options in our side, and I wouldn't know much about everywhere else, but it's definitely worth looking into. Um, in terms of, post sure, I think I would. Yeah, because some countries, America in I particular, would. does the post grad option, which is you have to have done a degree. Whereas Ireland has an option where you don't necessarily have to have a degree. Do you understand? So they, they call it the undergraduate entrance. Now, I didn't do that entrance because I didn't get enough points. So I actually did the post grad work because I had done neuroscience and then I did science. And then I did medicine, so you know I have the traditional American um, experience, but there's definitely options to skip that experience in Ireland and the UK, and I'm sure if you look at other other countries, other places. And then also, you know, in terms of finances, again, it's not the most um, you're not the only one. And I look forward to posting this video because I think it'd be encouraging to others to hear um, stories like this because it, there's this um, perception. Um, and that is true, actually, that only kids from wealthy backgrounds get into medicine. And, and actually, that is actually true. But more and more these days, we're seeing people like yourself or people seeing people like myself who are really challenging that status quo. And my story from that point, I mean, I almost didn't um, get to medical school, if not for the fact of the fact that um, I got a loan and I almost didn't even get approved for the loan. Like if I went into all the different financial aids I needed from the government, from charities over the years in order to get me to where I am, I mean... This, this, the, the interview would last for forever. And um, even when I was in medical school, the amount of students who ran into difficulties, ran into troubles, ran into will I be able to pay this thing or not, has been, was, you know, will continue to be um, shocking. And in, in Ireland in particular, they pulled that loan. So unfortunately for students who are in a similar position, they can't even apply that for that loan, even if they wanted to, because the government scrapped it. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it's very challenging. And it's worth talking about because what ends up happening is only a certain type of person with a certain right support system gets into medical school, which then affects the type of doctors who are coming out because if only doctors from a wealthy background come into medical school and finish medical school, then that affects the type of doctors they are by sheer nature of their experience. You know, you'd hope that education will be enough to broaden them, but I, I don't. I personally don't think education is enough. I think life experience is a different you know, maker. So I commend you on your journey. I'm excited for you. I also believe in you. I'm rooting for you. I think you can do this. Um, and I also know that you're not the only one. Um, oh no, 100%. You will, you will make it true. One of the biggest deciding factors 
for those who will finish medical school is pure determination. At least that's what the statistics say. It is it's a game of determination, man. It's not a game of because I'd be lying to you. Anybody be lying to you if they told you if what that was easy. Because it's not. And uh, whether financially, whether academically, it's not. That's the reality. But it's a game of determination. In the near future, because you, you were telling me um over chat that you want to create this um business. Um, marketing agency in the near future when Isaac the Creator is a qualified MD qualified physician how do you plan on merging your worlds because you're gonna be a busy man you're gonna have a full-time job and and your job won't be full-time only to be full-time plus a little bit more because that's the nature of doctors work yeah. how do you plan on merging the two yeah. I've battled with that thought a lot. Mm-hmm. I think I battle with it every day. It's like <laughs> um, I have school and then a certain thing. I just can't put them together. Why can't I can't it be like um, creative medicine or something? If like, like combination, we need to we need to come up with our own first thing. Creative medicine, <laughs> love it, love it. Yeah, but then um, I think I don't have it figured out. Yeah, sure. I'm still. Um, I'm just here for the journey. I'm here for um, what I can learn. I'm here for yeah. the person it makes me, the person I become mm. through this process. Mm. So um, over the years, I've like um, put up this Instagram page and I've tried my best to create um, in every shape or form that I can. And one thing I've realized is um, beyond what I put out, beyond what I get from what I'm putting out, I realize that it changes me as a person. It makes me a better person. It makes me better with my time, better with, in every of, um, of my life. It reflects, um, I am 20 and wow. I know, I, I know a lot of 20 year olds that, well, let me, let, let me rephrase that statement. So, I know that I would have been a lot, a, a lot behind mm. in terms of like what I would have been striving to do at this age mm-hmm. if I didn't get into the creative stuff. And mm-hmm. so I'm really grateful for the journey. I think at the end of the day, one would have to give. Um, I would figure out which one would have to give. Maybe somehow they would work together. I mean, I. I watch Ali Abdal. I don't know if you've heard about. I him. love the man. Like, the I love the man. I love the man. I love the man. <laughs> yeah. Um. Amazing. Uh, yeah. People like him. Mm-hmm. People like him push me forward. He was doing med. He was doing YouTube throughout med, med school, and then even while he was a doctor, and it was just recently that he that, gave up yeah, on medicine. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I think I want to see how far I can stretch. And yes. If one has to give them. Then so be it. Then you'll choose it when, when, when you get to that point. Amazing. For myself, I hear you. I agree with everything you said. And I love that you're all about the journey and you just want to see where things take you. I love that you feel that it's empowering you. And that's interesting and making you a better person. I love that. I love that philosophy. I love that outlook. And I guess the only thing I'd like to challenge is the idea of maybe that one has to give. But you know what? We live in a world where we have to trade off, you know? Everything is going to cost us, regardless of what, what it costs us is a question, but things are going to cost. There's an exchange all the time. And Ali made, you know, terms with his change, and he decided to to, um, to 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 leave medicine behind. I think for some time he was teaching, and I'm not sure if he's still in that space. He doesn't really talk about that. But then again, I'm not really up to date with his videos. Um, I have to say, Ali definitely, you know, is a huge factor in what I do. It is amazing and really encouraging to see someone else do what you're trying to do. And um, it really helps you ground yourself and know that you're not alone in your, I suppose, in your differentness. Because for other people, medicine is enough, enough of a problem, enough of a, enough of a, <laughs> enough of a problem is probably the right word, but enough of a feat to overcome. Adding in, um, creative anything really is an additional, um, additional stressor and I think that there's a breed of medics who want to do more than just medicine I think that society is changing I think that the types of doctors the type of people who are graduating these days want more out of life than just a job and there's a real pushback against the notion that medicine is a vocation that we just decide to give our lives to or we do nothing else and I'm excited to see 
um, my peers, people, my my level of um, I suppose what's the word? My level of professionalism, as in recent recent graduates like me, as well as um, students like yourself, and hopefully in the near future, you know, our seniors who are ahead of the curve, it'll be really exciting. People like Ali who are ahead of the curve to see what people, how much people push back against this idea that we must only vocate our lives to one thing. I'm a big believer in medicine as a hobby. To be honest with you, medicine as just a job, just like everybody else. Nobody else out here who works in Amazon, who works in a business, but well, at least some of them do, but a lot of people just go to work because they want to make money and they don't see it as a big deal and they have other things going on. I see the same thing as medicine. Like it is just a job, a job I want to do well at, but must, must it be the only thing about me? So I, I, I question whether it needs to be the only thing about me. So that's why I want to talk to people like yourself who are doing more than just medicine because I think we need to really push back and say, actually, no, I can't just devote my life to just this. I have other things in me that I want to see come out. So I think it's interesting to see how things will go. Um, and that's that's my thought. So absolutely, I agree with you. I, I am 100% behind that and i'm looking forward and i love that you said that you're not sure because you're figuring it out every day it's honest answer and it's the reality of our lives i myself 100 percent have not figured it out i don't know what i'm doing half the time i every day i struggle with um time management and just staying alive really. <laughs> stay alive is, is, is top priority at the moment when you come back from work and you're like okay should i edit the video should i post the video what, what am i doing half the time what am i doing you know so there's quite a lot of pulls on 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 one's time and i cannot i, I imagine i know what am i that as a medical student it's the same thing there's so many things to learn so many assignments to complete and then you have a little side business going so i am so excited to see where you go with your journey um I'm really excited to see where you go, Jordan. I look forward to continuing to follow you on Instagram, continuing to see what you're posting. Your content, by the way, is fantastic. The one that you posted recently um, Thank you so much. with the Barbie one, I mean, I was bl I was blown away with that particular um, video because it was so different. I mean, I was like, how did this guy pull these ideas? And, I mean, so many people have been posting about Barbie, right? Because it's such a topical thing at the moment. But the way you did it, and to, to put it in, in the context of content, that was, it, was, it was even help, I was helpful. I was like, oh, this, is, this is fresh, this is fresh, you know? So it's, um, it's amazing to see. Before we wrap up, I got a question. One of the things you'd said, I'm reading your notes here, is I want to build a community of relentless individuals who want to express themselves creatively and make a living doing so. To be honest with you, I want to build a community of relentless individuals who want to express themselves creatively, creatively and make a living doing so. And I was asking you like three questions, but I guess I want to know why you want to build a community, um, why you chose the word relentless individuals, and what kind of individuals are you drawn to, and why do you why do you want the type of people in your space? And I just wanted to you know delve a little bit into income from 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 this type of thing that we're, we're both trying to do. Um, and I think that we're both trying to do, trying to do that. You know, we're both trying to create um, a community, not a community, but create a space where we can eventually make money from. So, why are we trying to do that? Some people would even argue the fact that as future doctors or doctors at the moment, we are making enough or should make enough. Um, why is it important to have another source? Okay, dokie, let me know your thoughts. Right, um, I'm going to start from community. Sure, I mean, um, so, so I didn't go. To through the story of how I got into this creative space in the first place. But um, one key factor that helped me was community. Um, share your story. I mentioned share your story. Ali. Okay. Yeah, okay. share your story. We want so, everybody here wants um, <laughs> So, um, I think I've always, okay, in high school, mm. I used to paint. Um, I used to take this, co this class called painting and decoration. Oh. So I picked interest in it and then I got really good at it. Uh, I think I graduated the best student in that particular course. So um, I've always had that creative identity. Okay. But for a while after graduation, I stopped okay. painting. I, I just didn't I love <laughs> associate with that work anymore. Okay. Um, well, there was a catalyst. Um, I. I mentioned before I'm a Christian, so um, 
I go to a church and while I was schooling, there was this particular, let me call it a speech I was supposed to give in church, just a short um, talk I was supposed to give in church mm. and then I flopped. It was so embarrassing for yeah. me and I was so sad but I'm going to say the Holy Spirit ministered to me that sure. um, in order for that not to happen anymore, mm. I have to find a way to practice and then um, I had always been listening to Ali and um, a couple of other creators and um, one thing I realized is that they were very oratory and they knew how to use words to communicate effectively so I decided to do what I saw them do which was start a YouTube channel at that time mm -hmm. and then the YouTube channel around for a while and I just realized wow I love this I love I you love have a YouTube channel? I love imagining stuff and then bring Yes, but I'm more active on Instagram. Yeah, okay. once um, in a while. I must start. send me the link after this. I, I want to see. Yeah. All right. Sure. Sure. So, um, then it's just like when you when you don't know when you finally find something you love. I don't know. It's, it's I'm a very intuitive person generally, mm -hmm. creator or what you call it so i just kind of knew that it stuck and one thing that helped me back then was communities right um individuals that represented communities and that um created spaces where you could go in and learn and find people that are just like you and it really um fostered my growth and so that because of that I know the importance of community. I know that there's a 14 year old somewhere that um, might be inspired by this whole community that I'm striving to build something. And then it fills my heart with joy when I see people um, get the support that they need in whatever area. So in my little way, that's why I'm striving to build this community. And I've actually seen um, people being inspired by me, people making their first YouTube videos because mm -hmm. um, because I said something to them or people starting their podcast and who knows where it's going in the future, who knows um, what they'll be able to accomplish with that. So um, for me to be able to stand in that place, to be a catalyst for someone's journey, I, I really find it, um, that's about humbling, but it's, it's really fulfilling. So that is why. Uh, and relentless, um, I believe that um, one thing that one one indicator of all the people I believe that have helped in some way, capacity or form is that they push against um, some level of friction to get what they w want to do done, right? So um, I'm in med school and I want to start a YouTube channel. Um, I have to first of all figure out how do I organize my time okay. to be able to fit in this passion of mine mm -hmm. and then after I post my first video, post my second video, how do I stay consistent, how do I build a system, mm -hmm. it's all about um, learning and growing and you can't do that without being relentless so mm -hmm. I'll just say that this this journey is not for the weak, no, it's for it's the relentless, it's mm -hmm. for people that, oh yeah, it's for people that are determined and that's they have that drive to keep going okay. and yes um i believe that income uh, um i believe that first of all the income you make gives you a platform to make more impact mm -hmm. um in people's lives yes income is not just to eat food or to put food on the table income gives you a, an opportunity to make the change you want to see Absolutely. the world there's so yeah, there's so many forces in the world that we really need to stand up and fight against. There are so many things that are going wrong. There are so many things, and there are so many people that have um, the right value system, that have the right um, motivations, but they are being curtailed by their income rights. Mm -hmm. They have the voice, they have um, the ideas, but because of money, they are not able to. Um, magnify their voice as wide well as it should go. So, I believe that me increasing my income level and um, and motivating others and inspiring others to do so as well gives us a 
to to make the change we want to see. One hundred percent. Yes, that's. You've answered it all perfectly. If this was an interview, you'd have passed. <laughs> Uh, no, fantastic job, uh, fantastic perspective. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna work backwards. So I'm gonna comment on the things you've said. But I'll start with the income thing, and I would say that 100% having money opens doors. Whether we like it to agree is our choice. Also, people with money command change by the pure nature of it. As a Christian, if you want to um, say that. I don't like uh, the schools systems, the education system. It's not good enough. Let me um, fund the summer program where we will teach values that reflect um, biblical principles. You don't have to have money to do something like that, to make an impact that is greater than just your own local church or your own five kids that you know. You know, if you want to hit 500 kids, we're talking money. And the government aren't necessarily going to come to... In fact, they're definitely not going to come to fund a program like that because it's not inclusive. It doesn't include all the different religions, and you know maybe the value system isn't something that they want to you know promote. And I think the same can be said, particularly of Africa, where the government are not necessarily coming to save anybody, and it's down to the individuals who believe in these different um, things to make the change that they want to see. So, having wealth, having any amount of money, puts you in a position to be able to look back and give back. Um, so I, fu I, I fundamentally um, believe that. And to be honest with you, personally, with my YouTube, I would love a space where somebody watches a video and says, I want to help that guy. You know, somebody watches a video and says, I want to fund this program. Somebody helps, you know, because I intend on interviewing way more people from all sorts of backgrounds who are doing all sorts of really fantastic things. And while I might not be in a position to um, make any, make, you know, change, at least I would love if my platform caught the attention of the right person who's able to make the right change so building a platform now i'm talking about community so building a platform and having a community in this society in 2023 is a powerful um negotiating thing that you can have because yes it might make you money on a personal level but on a worldwide level you're so connected yet so disconnected at the same time it's a bit bizarre how i can have a conversation with you right now and uh, never have met you before only have met you through social media and still be able to speak with you is fantastic but at the same time within my own country within my own estate we are so disconnected as a people so it's like this paradox that we live in and um, where we can have and um, look at us both talking about how ali has both influenced both of us in different different ways i mean the man saved my medical degree as far as i'm concerned in, in the strategies he posted on his youtube on how to study and how to study effectively I might as well have included his name on, on the on the on the freaking transcript letter that I got. You know? So having a community where you're able to impact people and change people using social media is fabulously um I don't even know the words I'm looking for. All I know is the thing is powerful, you know. So the question then becomes are the right people building communities, are the right people have an influence? And and also is there a content going to the person who needs the most that's that's kind of a concern as well because the problem with social media is you select who you follow you select what you watch so you know if you follow the wrong person who puts the wrong idea in your head it's kind of like not really having that positive um impact and then the last thing that you sort of discussed there was the type of people who were drawing um, and the relentless individual and you're right um, this is not for the weak, this is not for someone who's not interested in finding solutions because what you find yourself is, is I have a lot of things to do and I want to do a lot of things. How do I, how do I merge the two? You have to be solution oriented to be able to do that because the type of person who only sees problems will never be able to combine something as difficult as medicine with something as equally as different, difficult as being a creative, whether that's a painter, a artist, a podcaster, a YouTuber, whatever you may be. Um, and if, even if you carry multiple of those hats, they are significantly challenging spaces to be in because, you know, a lot of people are doing it. Um, a lot of people are really good at it. And it's not the easiest um, place to get paid, at least when you have a nine to five job, it's very, very structured. Whereas in the creative space, there's no structure to it. It's very much, I don't want to say luck dependent, but like if you just meet the right person you can just do really well and some people are fantastic and never make the right network so it's a difficult and challenging space to be in and then to try and combine both difficulties 
to one, it's an almost impossible feat. Almost. It's close to being impossible. But what we know is we are solution-oriented people. And instead of giving up, we're looking for creative ways to overcome our challenges. And I think that's what separates the likes of me and you from somebody who's doing one or the other. There's nothing wrong with that. And, you know, do one or the other. If that's what's that's what you've been called to. That's what you want to do. But if you want to do more and be more and see more and achieve more, there is a space for that. And I think I'm trying to build a platform where people get to see that. That's why I want to interview. Because, yes, I'm doing my own cool things. But I want to talk to people who are doing equally cool things. Because in the midst of that, we will all find um, things that we can share with one another, one another about how we're living our lives, what we find works, and hopefully... That helps us be better people, but it also helps other people from the outside who are looking in on the space of medicine and looking in on the space of creativity and going, okay, I can actually do this too. These guys don't have 10 heads. I certainly don't have 10 heads. And um, I've come up with multiple struggles. We've talked about our challenges both today. And I think we can both agree that we're not saying it's easy. We're just saying it's possible. Um, and that's why um, the phrase I say when I start my channel, my start my YouTube video, and I didn't even say today, was welcome to the channel strip where we channel our energy into learning something new and we strip away negative misconceptions. Strip away. Yeah, we strip away negative misconceptions. So the energy that it takes to learn something new, we channel that energy. We're not channeling that using prayer, Holy Spirit, reading the book, um, fasting and praying, channel it using motivational words, um, repeating um, phrases of positive affirmation, whatever way you know how to channel your energy, channel it. Learn something new, and while you're learning something new, begin to strip away all those negative things you tell yourself, like, I can't do it, there's no way, it's impossible, it's hard, you know, strip it all back. Because we were, born, we were all born whole and equal. That's how I see it. We were born whole, equal, ready to face the world. And somehow, somewhere along the way, we started adding all these negative things that are not true, that don't reflect how God sees us, that don't reflect our true capabilities. And we need to just shed all that bad things and live the life that we want to live and if that involves doing a million things then so be it we will attempt to do them and, and decide as we go along if dropping them is a good idea that's fine but at least we would have tried to do it you know and i don't know if you want to add anything to that that's a wonderful summary yeah that's the summary, no, that's that's the summary. That's so <laughs> that you could about that section and that's, that's it could serve as a sermon and <laughs> you know some of my friends awesome. my friends used to say I should I should go into motivational talk and I'm like yeah 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 blah, blah, blah. Um, I, you know it'll just come in need to do two small small statements I don't need to do that full time you know mm-hmm. and that's the thing about being someone who's creative you've got to find your niche in Hone in on developing the skills that really make you happy. Because especially if you're the type of person who can learn and who's interested in picking up skills, it gets to a point in life where you have to start going, okay, I know I can learn this, but that doesn't mean I should learn this. You know, I know I can do this. Doesn't mean I should do this. I can I can also pause and I can also be like, I could do it, but I'm gonna I'm gonna not do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna chill. I'm gonna continue on this path. And that I'm on, and not add too many things to it. But that comes with that comes with growth. It comes with wisdom. It comes with time, and also it comes with clarity. You know, knowing who Isaac the Creator is supposed to be helps. Just be like, actually, I'm not going to do that thing very much. It's a fantastic idea, but it doesn't it doesn't fit into my vision of what I'm trying to achieve. And saying no then doesn't come from a place of I can't do it. it doesn't come from a negative place. It comes from a place of clarity. And we don't roll this way because we simply don't roll this way. Not because we can't, but we simply don't. You know? On that note... That's something of... <laughs> well, I was to say, might kick off another conversation. Yeah, so, it's fine. I mean, I kick think... off. Alright, so uh, I was saying I, I particularly struggle with that at the beginning, like um, shiny object syndrome. Mm. I would start on this part and then out just a little level of discomfort and I'm like oh that's the same over there and then I go chasing after other stuff so if you look through like my body of work on my YouTube my 
Instagram and TikTok every day. It, it is so fragmented and that's something I'm struggling to fix right now. But mm-hmm. yeah, it's going well so far. I'm trying to like streamline everything to one message, one voice. And, um, because I believe I've found some level of clarity now. Yeah, yeah. I love that you found clarity and good on you and keep on that pathway. But I will say, don't be afraid to appear disorganized. But internally, you have to be organized. As in, you have to find your clarity. You got to know what you're doing and why you're doing what you're doing. But you're under no circumstances. Does that have to be obvious to anybody else? Um, and the reason why I say that is, I myself find myself in a position where I'm like, what exactly am I about? Because I'm talking about a whole lot of stuff here that don't necessarily fit. And I've come to the conclusion that I am about learning. But more important than learning, I am about sharing information. As in, I learned it, now I want somebody else to know it. So I just want to disseminate information. Now, what am I disseminating information on is completely random. It's what I'm learning and the things I learn are often random. I so happen to be interested in one thing today, and tomorrow I'm interested in another thing, and so the so the whole thing goes. So I don't want to feel like I have to only post this thing because I'm known for this thing. I want to post whatever I want to post, however way I want to post. And I want people to follow that if they if they so desire. Like I'm not forcing anybody to subscribe. Subscribe if you want to subscribe. Watch if you want to watch. I want to do me. You do you. Let's all do ourselves. What I mean by we need to be able to say no sometimes is we ourselves as creatives, we need to be able to channel that energy in and be like, okay, calm down for a second and let's not... Because... When you have a lot of things going on, like we do, you have medical school going on, you have your business um, going on, and your YouTube, your Instagram, and you have your future goals that you need to, in the background, be working on. So you have to be careful to not, I'm giving advice that I'm not taking, by the way, but you have to be careful to not split yourself into 75 million pieces. Otherwise, there will be very limited progress in those um, different areas with areas so that's what i mean by sometimes we have to be able to ourselves hold on no let's pause let's just focus a little bit and that comes with clarity of knowing what is genuinely important to me today what i need to be doing that's going to be important to me in 10 years time what i need to be doing that's going to be important to me in 30 years time so there's a lot of things that we need to be gaining skills on and building our knowledge based on for the future and there's things that we need to be gaining our skills and building our knowledge on for now so there's a lot of work that needs to be done to prepare us for the future job that or the future position the future us but that also means being very very careful to balance everything so that our lives today are are good and our lives today are wholesome because we could die at any time and uh, you know you, you want to die happy having felt fulfilled about the life you've lived today not the life that you're gonna live tomorrow so we need to manage ourselves in order to be whole and healthy and happy today you know and that's what i mean by keeping it nice and neat and tidy and and managing our energies i don't necessarily mean it in the sense of other people and like your youtube doesn't have to be neat and tidy and your your what you talk about doesn't have to be perfectly aligned Great if it is, you know, great if it is, but certainly don't let it be the thing that limits what you post or limits how you edit or, I mean, just, just live life. You know what I mean? So I think there's this lovely balance that one has to be on. Yeah. 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 It's like, um, it's like you're on one path, but you don't walk one way. But you're still on one path. It's like you know where you're going and you're headed there. Yes. But it doesn't mean you have to march there or dance there or yeah. Yeah, I love what you said. I love what you know where you're going, and that journey doesn't need to be clear to anybody but you. You know where you're going. The danger with Instagram and YouTube is other people are watching stuff that we're posting. But that is like, like what, by the time this video comes out, I'm sure a whole lot of other stuff has happened, you know? So they're watching things that we're posting, in, not in real time. And also, over the span of time, it may look disorganized, but we're going somewhere. We know where we're going. That doesn't have to be obvious to anybody. Between you and God, Maji, 
You know, it's between you and God where you're going and how you're going to get there. Feel no obligation or no pressure for somebody else to understand that journey. That's between them and God if they understand it to be as far as I'm concerned. You know? Awesome. Awesome. It was lovely to talk to you. And, to to you. and I can't wait for the next time. Sure, sure. I have I mean, so many questions for you, but oh, maybe next time. <laughs> yeah, maybe next time. Feel free to Instagram me. We can chat over Instagram. We can chat over WhatsApp. I'd love to have your number. Let's, um, right. you know, I'd love to, this is good for me, as it is, I hope good for you, um, to just share minds on, on so many things, like time, time management, editing styles, um, recording styles. I have so much I want to learn. You seem to be all about the tech stuff. I'm not so good with that stuff. So, um, let, let's keep the conversation going. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me. Alrighty. Yeah. Okie dokie, bye. Have a wonderful day. And you too. Bye. Bye bye.